we are discussing the plethora, the absolute plethora of Sony hardware that is gracing our screens at the moment and it's doing the rounds on the socials. We have seen the Portal Remote Player and that is formerly Project Q. We have been seeing the Pulse Elite Wireless Headset as well as the Pulse Explorer Wireless Earbuds. And by God, these items are beautiful. Now we're going to go through one by one and I'm going to hand over to Spencer to give us some technical details on the Portal Remote Player. Sure, mate. So I'm not going to go over too much of what we already know or what we've discussed in the past. Because we know it's a streaming system where you can't actually download anything to it. Uh, we know you can hack it now as well, technically, you can get Android on it. But all we know now that's new, really, in that regard, is that they recommend you have an internet speed between 5 to 15 megabytes. And then it doesn't matter if you're at home next to your PS5, it helps. But you can also play games elsewhere and stream from your PS5 at home. But you need two very good internet connections for it to be good. Who knows? Who has faith in that? Who knows? But what we do know, what they've come out with on this blog post, verbatim, it says... The Portal Remote Player includes the key features of the DualSense wireless controller, including adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. The vibrant 8-inch LCD screen is capable of 1080p resolution at 60fps, and the prices for this system are $199.99 USD, €219.99, Euro, $199.99 GBP, insane, and 29980 yen. So it's bit strange that it's the same for us and america but those are the facts we finally have a price for this system now boys you guys have been very negative on this in the past and i've been quite positive i mean phil you kind of changed your mind after twitter came about and we saw a bit of hands-on but we're all very much a mixed bag with this with this little bit of news and with the prices finally announced has anyone's mind changed are you getting it does it seem reasonable? Who knows? Well, let me jump in straight away there, Spence. £199. Now, this thing, as I mentioned at the top of the topic, looks absolutely beautiful with its almost split dual sense controller surrounding the 8-inch LCD screen. It's a little bit of a pity that they didn't push that to an OLED screen and really show us the potential of a handheld that Sony could be putting out. But I'm a wily old fox, and I think they're going to be saving that if this goes well for a Portal Pro. We're seeing that a lot with PlayStation. We're seeing them give you a base model, then giving you a Pro model and upgrading a few bits and pieces. So I think if this sells well, we could possibly see an OLED screen, possibly, on a Portal Pro. Unfortunately, as we said, there's no Bluetooth. We're on the PlayStation link with this type of thing. But as we know, Sony doesn't really like Bluetooth, the security side of things. Obviously, it's a bit of a pain in the ass for them. So we're not seeing that as a connectivity option. The local play, unfortunately, and the no PS5 cloud streaming, it's a little bit bad, isn't it? You've got to have your PlayStation on. You've got to have that great internet connection. But I can really see a use for this around the home. We've got the big TV downstairs. My missus is on that TV, likes watching her shows. I can go up to the bedroom and I can still play PS5 and it's only costing me £199. I think I'm in. I, I really do. I think previously when we were talking about this, I was interested because there was the possibility to be able to hack this, put some Android on there. And then, of course, we can have a look at seeing if we can get some older games. Um, I would very much enjoy that process. But that price point that is so hard to say no, isn't it? 200 pounds for that thing. I'm in. I think I'm buying one of these. I really do. It'd be a lovely Christmas present or birthday present when this thing comes out, guys. Just putting it out there. Ain't gonna happen. Let me just tell you, Spence, I would rather shit in my hands and fucking clap. There is no fucking way. <laughs> no way am I buying this. No Bluetooth. Fuck off. Oh, no chance. I mean, it's nice having the 3.5 port, so at least you can do something. Like with my Astros, I could plug these in. I could play them. No problem at all. I could hear that sound. But no. I still think this, this device just totally flawed from the get-go. Nothing's changed. And all the news is bad news. The only thing about this is the price, which £200 isn't bad. But it's just the whole point of the device just hasn't changed for me. So my opinion, therefore, has not changed. This thing ain't going to fucking sell. 
It's going to sit there. It's going to collect dust. Why you need this when you could spend in a year's time the same price for another PS5 to put somewhere else in your house and you just link up both systems so they share the games is beyond. A TV is fuck all. You can go to Facebook Marketplace and just get a TV that is 1080p or better for basically free. I literally gave a, this style TV that was 40 inches away this week. Literally away just to my wife's friend because it's worth fuck all. It's not even worth me putting on this like 50 quid. What's the point? This thing's just a fucking joke. It really is. It, it's just an absolute joke. It just gets me angry. And the more we talk about it, the angrier it gets. And when I go around to Phil's, I'm going to smash it up. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Spence, you're invited, but Davey, you're off, you're off the list now. Just hide it, mate. Just hide it whenever I come around, because I will. I'll get it. I'll, f- I'll sniff you're it out. You're on the list. I'll, you're not coming in, mate. Mate, I'll be like a bloodhound for that, for that fucking Project Q bastard piece of kit. <laughs> I'll find it, bro. No matter where you... I'll be there and... Gah! Over the knee. Gone. Obliterated. I've done the world a favour. Sorry for those kids that mined that lithium or whatever. Sorry for you. You've lost out on this. But the... it's gone in the trash, mate. It's gone in the trash. Get recycled, bro. Fair enough. I mean, well, Phil, thanks for inviting me over. And I'll tell you what. I'll bring mine. Because it's a day one for me. I think this little system, 200 quid, I just spent that much on a controller, on a DualSense Edge. For a controller with a screen in the middle, where, I mean, I'll be in bed playing it and my TV's right there and my PS5's right there. I could just be on the PS5, but I could also be portable. <laughs> I just like the idea of it and I really think 200 quid is actually a great price for it. A controller alone is 70 quid, a normal controller. Extra 130 to have a screen in the middle. I think that's quite nice. But my kind of question for you, Phil, is I don't think you should be buying it because you can just get remote play on your Steam Deck. And I feel like it'd probably serve roughly the same purpose. You know me, mate. I really just like my tech. So I think I'm just going to be buying it just for the sake of it a lot of the time. Um, But I'm really liking, you know, having the actual PlayStation controls with this because, of course, it is literally just a dual sense in half. We get the haptics, we get the adaptive triggers, and they've got a really unique way of uh, integrating the touchpads into this system because they've just put it into the screen which I, I'm loving. Of course, we're not, we're not getting that um, with the Steam Deck integration. The syncing is a little bit off. Even playing some of the Steam games on the Steam Deck is a little bit off. So I'd have the same sort of frustrations playing my PlayStation game. I'm not going to be getting a PlayStation operating system on here. It's just not going to be as good as playing on the, the Portal Remote and £200. It's a snip, mate. Why not? It's fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Tell you what, I completely agree. I think Davey... You're going to be very upset when you see your two best mates on the couch together playing on their portal remotes. I think you're going to have a horrible day and you're not invited. I'll just pull out my fucking phone and just join you. And I wouldn't have paid. I'll say Enjoy 200 your quid. touch controls, mate. I'll just fucking Enjoy buy a Backbone controls. 1 for like 30 quid off eBay and just plug that on. I don't get adaptive triggers, but you know what I will have? An extra 200 quid and I can buy some King Ice Chains. And I could just wear those <laughs> instead. <laughs> Take those wherever I, think we've got I want ourselves to go. ourselves a thumbnail. <laughs> Shout out, King Ice Baby. Right. Let's move this on to the next bit of hardware because Davy is getting overly negative. So hopefully he's got a little bit of shine for the Pulse Elite Wireless headset. So, Spence, over to you for a little bit of detail. Sure. So, for the Pulse Elite, I'm a bit upset that this was revealed as I have the normal. PlayStation Pulse headset, but that's okay, I think. This is basically a new pro version of the headset that I already own, and I'm sure multiple people already own. It's PlayStation's flagship headset. It's basically their, probably their best way to get you 3D audio, I think, or their option for it anyway. Uh, It's the most native, I suppose, and all the buttons are on the headset itself. But this is the new pro version, which has an extendable mic on the side. Uh, which is very nice, supposed to be a way better quality mic. I don't think the mic on the original Pulse is that good. I think it's okay, it does the job, but it's not a great mic. It also comes with a charging hanger. Lovely little bit of kit. I like that they're doing this with the um, DualSense Edge, came with a case. This comes with a hanger, so you can hang it under your desk. Lovely. But it also has AI-enhanced noise rejection, 
capable of filtering background sounds. Lovely. Nice, crisp, clear audio. Much like ours on this show, boys. Lovely. Well done, us. But this does it in real time. Something we need to learn to do. That'd be great. This headset is also the first PlayStation audio device to use custom designed planar magnetic drivers for an audiophile level listening experience normally found in premium headphones for professional sound engineers. This is the first time this is going to exist in a gaming headset. So we're looking at some really, really good audio quality and a better mic for $149.99 USD. 149.99 euro that doesn't make sense 129.99 gbp again doesn't make sense compared to the last product or 18,980 yen for the playstation elite headset so davy do you feel like this is inviting you to buy a new headset i know you you talk about the astros very highly and you've got you've got a high opinion of your astros uh, but i have had some audio problems when we've been on the playstation with a little bit of echoing do you think now is the time to move over to a first party uh hardware and pick up the pulse elite wireless headset well i'm glad you asked so the headset i use for the podcast and what i used to use on ps4 is my astro my astro a40s and they're the best headset I've ever owned. They're incredible. The The sound isolation, everything's amazing on them. For PlayStation 5, I use the SteelSeries 7 P Pluses, uh, which are the ones that I use at the moment. Um, I really like the sound. They're really comfortable. Not as comfortable as the Astro A40s. Um, and the mic does give you guys bleed issues, which is a real issue for me. It's something that's actually been bothering me quite a lot. I really like the design of this. I really do. The only thing that's put me off is those ear cups look shit. They look really, really tragically cheap. And that's the only thing that puts me off them. I think that the actual design of the headset looks absolutely phenomenal. The charging stand's a really nice little touch. This price isn't high enough for me. I know that sounds really like as if I'm putting something on here. This is too cheap. $129.99? I think I paid that originally for my Steel Series. And I'm thinking about upgrading those to the brand new Steel Series, which are currently what they're even called now, but they're 350 quid. And they look lush and they're really premium leather. Same kind of cost as what these Astros were with the with the dock that I had that came with PS4 at the time of its release. And you get what you pay for. So for me, the thing is, this is too cheap for me. I think this is going to be an upgrade for somebody who was looking for a more premium experience. And what they're saying here with the planar magnetic drivers the more expensive gaming headsets use this already. This isn't new. But I think I'd need to feel them. I know it sounds really weird, but I think I'd need to feel what that, that those cups feel like. Because right now, looking at them, they're going to feel the same or what it looks like the same as what Spence has in your standard ones, just maybe a little bit thicker. And to me, that's just too cheap. It's just not comfortable enough on the ears. And it doesn't block enough sound out. So... I'm kind of on the fence with this one. I, I think for me, I would have liked it to be £100 more and to use more premium products in its design. How about you, Spence? What are you saying with these? Um, Davey has said that you already own the standard Pulse. Would you be upgrading to the Pulse Elite? I'll tell you what, mate. I'm looking at these. And honestly, I think I will. Because I've, I do love my Pulse. They kind of, they're a bit battered. I've had them since the day they launched. I got them literally on the day and the earmuffs are worn. The cotton inside the one earmuff fell out within like two weeks. I had to glue it back in. So the one earmuff is like dodgy. I mean, they still sound great and they're comfortable. But for this, charging them is a nuisance because it takes up an extra USB-C, which I mean, is fine. Everything uses it. This has the coat hanger. You could just hang on to my desk, charge it. Lovely pop it off, hang it on, and it charges itself. It's got a little prong at the top where it just magnetically charges. Lovely. I really like the design of it. The pads do look better, but as you said, Davey, they do look like the same material. So I do think they will still have the same issue of the muffs getting worn really quick. But I don't think that's too much of an issue when you can replace the pads for probably quite cheap. Maybe replace them for more premium pads as well. And it's not much of an asking point it's actually quite a cheap headset considering the features of it the only concern i have 
is that I love my Pulse headset because of all the buttons and control I have on the fly, on the headset itself. The pictures they've shown of this headset, I can't see those buttons. So I'm sure they're probably there, but I can't see them yet. So I'd probably wait for a review of this headset, see how people like it, and if it looks good, then it would be a day one, because I am looking to upgrade my headphones. And this kind of, if it works the way I want it to, is the perfect solution. Coming back to me, I've got to agree with Davey on this one. I really have. I, I think the price point that these are coming out at with the 129 feels too cheap. But then I have got to agree with Spencer on this one. There is a lot of positives here, okay? So they are more premium than the standard Pulse headsets. We have the retractable boom mic, so of course we're gonna get some upgraded audio in that area. And I, I would have said your original Pulses weren't that bad. I, I had less issues hearing you than I did hearing Davey with the far more expensive headsets uh, that he's talked about. I do find the, the hanger quite a weird proposition to go along with this headset because I play my PS5 uh, in the living room with the big TV. I'm not going to be hanging it on the wall in my living room. I don't know how that's going to work for me. So I hope there's some other alternative charging options. Uh, possibly I can just, you know, charge it with USB, hopefully. Uh, the AI noise, uh, sorry, AI enhanced noise rejection. That sounds very interesting. Uh, as well as using the new PlayStation wireless audio technology, the PlayStation Link. Happy to be doing that uh, because, of course, Bluetooth is enabled on these, but you won't get Bluetooth attaching to your PlayStation. That is there, so you can answer calls at the same time time it seems like a bit of a weird inclusion for these headsets and of course both of these headsets that we're going to be talking about includes this technology and i just don't understand why it's there it's like we have put in bluetooth on there so you can answer calls i think maybe it's more likely we've put bluetooth on there so you can use these headphones with other devices outside playstation so of course you can connect them to your phone you can connect them to your mac you can connect them to your pc to be able to play games with or just listen to music and use them as standard headphones but i will very much be using them on the playstation 5 which is downstairs as i said currently uh, i'm using a pair of headphones that i won at a fanatic event um, they're great headphones but i wouldn't say they're you know the the more premium uh, level that these pulse elites are at but i think 129 they they feel like a bit of a bit of a snip a bit of a deal um, but unfortunately i would have liked them to come out at a higher price point i don't know if we're going to get you know a, a pulse elite wireless headset pro <laughs> possibly in the future are we going to get a 350 pound headset are we going to get that kind of level of headset because that's kind of what i really want um for on playstation but if i can't have that I guess I'm going to go for the 129. I need to upgrade my headphones. So it's just coming out at the right time for me. And that sort of leaves us, I suppose, with the Pulse Explorer wireless earbuds. Now, this one's a little bit of a confusing one for me. I don't know exactly when I would want to use these ones. I don't know if you guys are a little bit excited about these. They do look very cool. Now, Spence, I'm going to hand it over to you once again to fill us in on a couple of technical details. Sure, mate. So in regards to the uh, tech behind these earphones, it's more or less kind of the same stuff included in the Elite in regards to the sound quality. They're using the exact same planar magnetic drivers, but you boys asked for a higher price point and this might be your solution. So these earphones, they come with their own little charging case, which I'm sure you boys have seen it. Listeners, I hope you've seen it. It is beautiful. These little earbuds are stunning. I think they look amazing. And they're basically just a small form factor version of this Elite headset, rather than, I mean, they don't have a boom arm sticking out, obviously but they're very nice and they're just nice little earphones for you to use. And they also have the link properties of the Elite headset so that you can connect them to your PS5 and use the earbuds, which kind of like you said, Phil, probably not too much useful, except something I'll get to in a moment. These are going to be coming out at 199.99 USD, 219.99 Euro, 199.99 GBP, and 29,980 yen. I don't know who did the conversions for these prices because they are all over the place compared with these free products. It is ridiculous, but that is the price. Now you boys wanted a more expensive product. Is this what tickles your fancy? 100%, yes, 100%. This is a day one for me. When pre-orders go up, I'm gonna put a pre-order in. 
This is exactly what I want. For me, this is the requirement for VR. I think that the little earbuds that come with it are great. I'm really, really impressed actually by the little earbuds that come with PSVR 2, a standard and clip into the back of the headset. I use them all the time. I could use a normal headset over the top, but I don't. I use the earbuds. And these replace that. And also for me, it is a unique case scenario. I use some Sennheiser earbuds and they're fantastic. Sounds excellent on them, but they got a fatal flaw in their design. Even when the headset's fully charged, the little earbuds, they continue to charge in the case. So it just drains the case out to zero. So it means I need to put the case on charge the night before I go anywhere so that I've got a continuous day use. Normal earbuds these days don't have that issue. This is an early problem with earbuds. I need to replace my earbuds anyway. I can get some cool ass earbuds from PlayStation that I can use then on the way to work and at home playing VR. And if the sound's great and if it doesn't have bleed for you guys, fuck, I'll just use these. Save ruining my hair. I can just put them on. I don't get a little dent in my hair. Bro, we winning all over the place. To me, this is a perfect little product, and this is exactly the kind of thing I want. Will it replace a full-on gaming headset? No, I don't imagine it will. But the sound quality I get on my Sennheisers is excellent. And if this kind of matches up to that with this kind of price point, which I imagine it will do, I'm all for it. Absolutely all for it. This is a day one for me. Damn straight. Glowing. Glowing review. Phil, mate, how about you? Now, Spence, I alluded to the fact that I don't know when I would use these. And I think that's because I do have Apple AirPods Pro, but I very rarely use those, unfortunately. And they are sort of at the higher price point that these are sort of at. So I don't really need two sets. And at the end of the day, they never stay in my ears. If I was going to be using them for gaming, and you know what I'm like when I'm playing games, I'm all over the place. I'm jumping at all the, the jump scares. I'm, you know, as we're going around the corner, I'm shooting the guns. I'm reenacting it all with the handsets. So yeah, these would be straight on the floor. I don't know if I could use these for playing PlayStation. I very much would want uh, the overhead. Unfortunately, I don't care too much about my hair. I just care about hearing the audio. But they do look beautiful, don't they? And that, that, it just keeps bringing me back. I keep looking at them. That case, those earphones, they do look beautiful, but I just don't have a use for them at all. Maybe if my earpods fall out as I'm getting on the train and I lose them, I might invest in the PlayStation ones because they are a sexy bit of kit. Have to concur, mate. Have to agree. They are absolutely stunning. And similar to yourself, I don't have the pros, but I have the AirPod Gen 2s, I think they are. Just the normal ones, not those little in-ear ones. They're much more like the um, wired earphones that you used to be able to get. Um, you can probably still get them, but I have those. And I use mine all the time on the way to and from work every night when I'm beating my... Every damn day I'm using those <laughs> earphones. Every day. And these, imagine how it would sound. <laughs> It'd be great. So I'm thinking for me... I'd love these earphones, but I'm already day one on two out of these free peripherals and it, the money's building up. So I don't know how I feel about it. They're not something I need just yet. My point that I was going to say, which you mentioned, Davey, is these would be perfect for VR. Absolutely perfect. But I'm not like you. I don't use those um, little clip-in earphones that came with it. I use my Pulse headset when I'm on VR because it... It feels like when you play it, it's made for it. It fits so snugly in where the ears are on your PSVR 2. It fits perfectly. And I'm a bit concerned about that with the Elite because they kind of stick out. So I'm a bit worried about that. I'm sure it'll be fine. But if that is the case and the Elite isn't comfortable, then this would be a day one. I don't need them yet, though. I already have a set of AirPods. But Phil, man, they are beautiful, aren't they? They are some beautiful little bits of kit by god it's it's do you know what they are they're the thing that you tell yourself you don't need and then as soon as you see your mates you order them right away that night that's what they are i'm not going to buy them day one but i'll see davies on day one and then i'll order them on day two and that's what's going to happen 100 percent, 100 percent. yeah well you're both welcome to try them you're both welcome to give them a go i'll show them off I got no problems with you guys smashing them. Ain't the Project Q around my house. They ain't going to be that. 
So you got all the faith you can touch them, you can put them in your ears, put them in whichever orifice you feel like. As long as you wash them off and I don't know about it, fair game. Hi oh. Hey oh. So I suppose following this, Spence, and thank you, uh, Spence and Phil, for running down uh, the news with these different peripherals. We got a bit of breaking news when it comes to you audio files out there. Sony have purchased Audis today. Now Audis, total honesty, brand new to me. I had never heard of this this uh, company at all in any way, shape, or form. Now I'm not exactly an audio file. I'm not one to be really picking up. Oh, this is only goes down to this DB. Only dogs can hear this, but I want to be able to hear it. I'm not one of these fucking losers, but I do appreciate a nice sounding headset as we've made quite evident across this entire thing. Audis are exactly the company that we are looking for. They do gaming headsets, which go for about £350 upwards. But more importantly, they do studio level headsets, which go for £3,000 plus. £3,000 plus. Woohoo! These are a big fucking deal in terms of you audio files out there. And for me, what this means for us is that this is the kind of purchase that means in a few years, when R and D goes through and they get some PlayStation branding on it, we get some three hundred to five hundred pound headset out from Sony, and then you're talking my fucking language, Sony. As soon as you hit that three hundred pound price point, you'll fucking got my eyes lit up, and you got me. Because if you get the kind of design that Sony do, but with the chops that an Audi's headset has behind it, oh my god, you're in for a winning partnership. Now, for me, this isn't really talking more about the gaming space, even though Sony, their biggest market share in their entire business is PlayStation. Sony obviously are well known for their TVs, for their headphones, for all the different media players, kind of everything else that they do, their movie business. <laughs> <laughs> you got some wins and some misses, all right, with their movie business. And of course, their cameras, Phil, as you quite rightly mimed. For me, I think it's just a great way to put Sony back on the win when it comes to their audio market. It's slowly being eroded by pretty much everyone, to be honest, from the likes of Bose to like Samsung themselves and all the other big kind of tech con uh, conglomerates, all taking a little piece of the market from what used to be Sony's piece. So, with this, if they can get Audis's technology, and lift up the wider Sony and get their headsets to be more of a peripheral that people want to buy. This seems like a great purchase for them in terms of being able to adapt that technology and put the Sony branding on it. Does anyone have any thoughts on this and, and what it could mean for the future of PlayStation and Sony in general? Phil, you're a bit of an audiophile. You like uh, your, your more high-end headsets, same as myself. What do you feel about this news? I kind of feel the way we've linked these two topics together as one was maybe pre-planned because the things we were saying, we very much answered them with this final bit of news. This is the news that we want, but we're probably a couple of years too early, unfortunately. But you're completely right, Davey. As soon as they start releasing PlayStation headsets at that three, four hundred pound mark, that's when I'm in. I'm not talking about the three thousand, the four thousand um, pound headphones that, of course, or or these uh, release, and you. Can can see those of course across the internet they're absolutely stunning but i think that's way above my price bracket but as soon as they come down to the playstation market and we're getting that technology as you said with the sony branding i cannot wait that, that's a dream come true situation for me personally and spence i mean i know you haven't forked out that kind of money before but would you for this kind of pairing nah, it'd be easy wouldn't it it'd take my money sony i mean what well, i'm gonna buy a 450 pound console a 550 pound psvr2 unit and then not buy a 500 pound headset come on let's be less than a 220 pound controller and a 200 pound portable device i'm buying your headphones sony just make them as soon as they're out i we rightly said it's years away it will take a while but if it does have the quality of these or these headsets damn yeah it'd be a day one it'd be so easy they could sell me six of them they couldn't that's way too much i would need one but i'd do it i would do it yeah easy easy and it that would be my first premium headset really because i've mostly got middle range headsets so i'd i'd actually be really excited for it i'd love to see what comes out of this 
Listeners, I will pass it over to you. Have you got any thoughts about these different peripherals? Which one is your favorite? Is there one that you're going to be buying? How did you feel about Project Q? Now it's called PlayStation Portal. Has it price point swayed you over like it has with the lads? Let us know in the comments section or, of course, write into the email psvtrust at gmail.com or reach out to us on the socials. Loads of ways to get in touch. Just let us know.